Hey, y'all, uh, this is Ty, a.k.a. The Flip Man. Today is a great day. I got a text message uh, on yesterday from not a student, but a YouTube subscriber of mine. He's done what I encourage a lot of people to do, especially when they call me and want me to uh, <laughs> offer the coaching and training for free. I encourage them to go through the 200 plus videos. So I have my man uh, out of California. So yes, you can wholesale in California. Um, uh, Chris uh, Gomez, uh, he's in the uh, Apple Valley area. Is that, is that that's where that's where you're located, Chris? Riverside. Riverside. Okay. All right. How far? What what you said at how far from uh, Los Angeles? Yeah, about forty five minutes. Okay, forty five minutes. Okay, but uh, he's going to tell his story and how he got to this point and picked up a uh, really nice payday, um, I guess, on yesterday, uh, $21,500. And uh, he's going to go through what he did. Um, I'm just going to sit here and listen and ask a few questions. Um, it, it made my day. Uh, anytime someone sends me a picture of a, of a uh, payday, uh, it always makes my day. Obviously, I would have liked that tech myself, but... <laughs> the next best thing was just putting a smile on my face and um, uh, convinced him. I asked him would he be interested in sharing his story, you know, maybe to help others. And he's he said, OK. So but before we get into that. Just do a little house cleaning here. Um, uh, remember, I still well, actually, I don't have this anymore, so we'll go past that. But I have the apartments. You can go to uh, apartments. Uh, for sale.net that's a p t s apartments abbreviated apartments for sale.net and you can see the property that i have available there now uh but don't forget about the actual 200 videos uh chris used to do his first deal twenty one thousand five hundred dollars subscribe to the youtube channel make sure you turn on the notifications uh if you want a free copy of the actual contract chris you am i right chris yeah that's the one that's the one. Uh, he used it. Uh, text the word contract to 313131. Contract to 313131. Don't text me. Text to that number. No area code is needed. Treated those six numbers as a phone number. So you can get a copy of that contract. He used it in the state of California. All right. You can also obviously follow me on Instagram, flipman.net. Uh, follow me on Twitter, the flipman. Obviously, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Again, turn on the notifications. Uh, if you want me to come to your city and train you, that option is available. It's a price ticket on it compared to the online and the online option, but people want it, I'll make it available. Again, if, uh, if you want to get into the commercial side of the business, uh, flipthisbuilding.com, uh, low competition. You can do it from your laptop, so that's virtually. Um, sea of opportunity because the, the entire country is your playground. No cash or credit needed. Big fat paydays. Um, where are we here? Privatemoneylist.net. Uh, that's privatemoneylist.net. Uh, 400 private money lenders. The name speaks for itself. And then, of course, um, we have um, realpof.com. Uh, if you need proof of funds, you're going to deal with real estate agents. The only way they're going to take your serious brokers if you have proof of funds. So um, let's get into why you're here, uh, which um, let me make sure that um, we are sharing the full screen here. OK. All right. So Chris, is, as you said, he's from Riverside, California, uh, outside of Los Angeles. And um, Chris. Tell us a little bit about yourself and we'll get to how you got involved in real estate. Uh, well, I'm 32, uh, married, live here in Riverside, I run a, a local business here in Riverside, own a, a telemarketing company. We sell tools and supplies uh, basically around the country. That's what I do for a living. I've uh, gotten real estate because I, uh, over the last couple of years, we picked up a couple of rental properties, nothing major, but just, you know, bought some property and have some renters. And uh, I'm just one of those people that's always trying to learn how to do stuff. So I was just, you know, I'm always researching real estate and studying things. And somehow I tripped across your videos and that's kind of what got me the bug in the beginning. I was watching them and I was like, I can do this in my spare time, you know? So I just kind of jumped on it from there. You know, I got a buddy that 
works with me uh, in the telemarketing business, who's a top producer salesman, real cool guy. We're good friends, uh, him and his girl and me and my girl. So I told him, I says, hey, I go, we should just put our money together and, you know, buy some uh, bandit signs and some yellow letters. And I go, we could do this easy. And that's just how it all came about. <laughs> OK. Literally had no clue about it. <laughs> Well, uh, Chris reached out to me, asked me about my course of the training. That was back on December 20th. I just went through my um, text dialogue on his number. Um, and um, uh, he asked me about it. And I didn't hear from him again until yesterday. And so, uh, Chris, if you'll just tell us, uh, when you bought your, you just said you bought Bandit Signs, if you, you, you're you similar to me, if you didn't get anything else out the training, and of course you're a telemarketer, so you understand the value of marketing. Um, tell us about how, from when you bought the Bandit Signs, you got your uh, direct mail campaign in place, and what happened from there as far as getting to this deal uh, with this particular property owner? Well, um, you know, I think I, I text you December 20th and then after that it was, you know, the holidays and whatnot. So on January 4th was the first time we went out and we put up the bandit signs. I bought, uh, I think it was 300 of them up front, you know, so we put them out. Uh, we sat there, you know, we had the, the Google voice line set up, ready to roll. And to my surprise, didn't get that many calls. So it kind of took the wind out of me the first week. I was just like, oh no, like no one's calling. I mean, we got some calls, but it wasn't, uh, you know, as much as I thought it was going to be. So I told my friend, I said, you know, we just got to stay consistent with it and maybe do some other types of marketing. So I looked into the yellow letters. Um, I found a company that would just, you know, do them, mail them, send them the whole nine yards. Don't even got to touch them for about a dollar a piece. Right. So I said, we'll start with a thousand. We sent out the yellow letters and then about, this is about uh, January 15th or so before the letters hit. Um, so the first two weeks, we were literally just sitting there antsy, like, you know, God, I need a deal. I want to talk to somebody, you know, and we were talking <laughs> to a few people, but, you know, nothing, nobody that was serious, you know. Once the letters hit, um, then I started getting quite a few calls, um, <clears throat> made some offers, just, you know, nothing crazy. No, nobody was really motivated. But finally, we got, you know, the first deal with a, a seller that uh, was extremely motivated because basically he had a, his sister owned a property that she had bought like in 1985 brand new. A couple years later, she was going to lose it to a foreclosure. He bought it and been renting it back to her all this time. Here we are now, you know, 30 years later, the property's paid off. And I guess she's moved in two or three roommates and nobody's paying rent. And he was just so stressed out. I mean, I really felt bad for the guy. He was an older guy. I think he was like uh, 65 or something like that. But he was just, you know, super stressed about wanting to unload this place. And I did just like you said, you know, when I, when I talked to him, uh, I asked him, you know, if he had any idea what he thought the property was worth. He said, yeah, probably about 150, 160, you know, um, I asked him what the kind of condition the property was in, you know, blah, blah, blah. I knew my, I was doing my math, you know, as I was talking to him on the phone, just on the initial phone call. And, uh, I said, uh, you know, so if I could pay you cash, you know, buy it as is close quick, what's the least you'd take? <laughs> <laughs> just like All you right. said, right? <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. All right, go ahead, man. So, so he came back and he goes, well, he goes, maybe 125. And so I just kind of sat there like... I says, you know, I don't, I don't think I can do that. I says, I might be a, a player around 107, 108, somewhere in there. And then he sat there and kind of went, <sighs> him and Han, you know. So I have a lot of experience dealing with people on the phone because, like I say, we run a telemarketing company. So I says, you know, Dan, I go, just let's put the money on the back burner for a second. Let's get to know each other. I said, you a sports guy? You like football, basketball? What's your thing, you know? Come to find out he's a Laker fan. So am I. I'm in California, right? So. And don't, I don't yeah. want to hear nothing about the Lakers either, all right? But <laughs> so horrible. horrible. I, I'm, a, I'm a Laker. Of course, I'm in Birmingham, Alabama. We don't have an NBA team, so you have to choose somebody. And I'm a Laker fan also. So it's, okay, okay. oh my cool. God, it's pitiful. See, I knew I liked you. But, so, yeah. So I, I told the seller, I says, you know, now that I know you're a Laker fan, maybe I could give you some more money. <laughs> you know, we started laughing, joking, bullshitting, you know, uh, excuse my language. And so he says, you know, I think we can do the 107, Chris. He goes, but let me talk to my wife um, and then I'll call you tomorrow. So I says, okay, that's fine. Me and my wife were actually on our way to Vegas the next morning for her 35th birthday. We had a big party going on out there and whatnot. So the next day we're in Vegas. Uh, I get the call. He says, yeah, I talked to the wife. She said, we're good to go on 107. And at this point, I hadn't even seen the property yet. Just, you know, what I seen on literally on Zillow, like no, no pictures of the inside or nothing. I was just going by what he told me the condition was, you know. So at that point, I'm scrambling. You know, I'm like, OK, I got a deal, but I don't have a contract. I don't know what to do. I, got, I don't even know how to fill out the contract. So, you know, I, I text you. I got the free contract. 
and I'm literally in my car, you know, uh, <laughs> excuse me, in my hotel, just looking at the contract, trying to figure out how to fill this thing out. And I'm like watching your other video of how to fill it out. And I'm like, <laughs> just so confused, you know, but I'm just like, well, all right, I'm just going to do this by hand. So I just wrote it all by hand, sent it to him in an email. Well, uh, he calls me out there and he says, Hey, I got your email, but he didn't have a, a printer. He was like, I can't print this thing. He goes, can't you just have it me elect, you know, sign it electronically somehow? I says, no, nah, I'm not set up to do that. Um, so why don't you just go to the UPS store and print it out? So he's like, well, I don't even know where one's at. So I'm over here in Vegas in my hotel. I'm like Googling the nearest UPS store, trying to get him directions to go down there. The whole thing was scrambled, you know, but it all worked out. He ended up going to the UPS store. They printed it out for him. He signed it. They emailed it back to me. So boom, we got the contract in place. So you did it for the for 102, 10, what, did you, what was the price? Well, we initially contracted it at 107. Okay, that's go what, ahead. Go ahead. What, okay. So right. then, um, you know, the next day or whatever, I get back from Vegas. Uh, me and my buddy go up and see the property. To our surprise, it was actually like in pretty good condition. It just needed like, a, you know, minor rehab, you know, just all cosmetic stuff. There's just a bunch of roommates. They're using it kind of like a crash pad. So it was just real dirty. Mm -hmm. But property overall was was pretty nice. But I just couldn't help it. You know, the sales and <laughs> the salesman and me wanted to call him back and just see if I could get it lower, you know. So I just says, man, Dan, you know, come on. You're one Laker guy to another. You're going to do me like that? I says, man, I didn't know it was that rough. Oh, <laughs> you ain't doing like that, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. oh, that's I, good. We're good. I just told him, I says, uh, you know, I says, I gave you my word. You know, we got a deal. I said, but I just want to just be upfront honest with you. You got any wiggle room on this thing? I said, my partner's giving me a lot of grief over this. You know, I think we got to get it a little bit cheaper. <laughs> So he's, we kind of went back and forth for a minute and then actually it's almost the same scenario. He says, let me talk to my wife. And so later I get home and I get a text message and he says, uh, we'll do, my wife says, we'll do 103. Right. I think I had told him like 101 or something like that. So I text him back and I said, why don't we call it 1025 and I'll get you a free Laker cup and I'll buy your wife a Target gift card so she can get out your hair for a while. <laughs> He texts me back a smiley face. He says, my wife says, deal. <laughs> all through text message. Yeah, all right, so yeah. At that point, that's when the panic set in because I'm like, I don't have any buyers. Like, I don't know. I don't even know what to do. I don't even know how to open escrow. I don't know any of this stuff. So now I'm back on your videos, watching everything, trying to figure it out. And I always hear you say, it's not hard to give away money. <laughs> and man, you weren't lying. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so what did you do? Well, um, I was looking on uh, in my local market for like real estate investment clubs. And there happened to be one at the mission Inn, which is here in Riverside. And it just so happened to be the very next day. This was like on a Tuesday. So on Wednesday I says, you know, I'm just going to go to this real estate club, see if I can meet some rehabbers and just exchange some info, whatever, you know, and I have a friend of mine that's uh, an agent. I used him when I bought my personal residence and my rental property. So I was thinking maybe he might know somebody. So I kind of reached out to him a little bit. He didn't really have anybody in mind, but he's going to, you know, look around for me and um, make a long story short. I actually met a couple people at the real estate investment club and mm -hmm. the very next day I sent them pictures and whatnot. And I had an offer right away for 112. And so my initial instinct was like, all right, cool. Got an offer. Let me get in and get out. But I just kind of had a feeling that this property was like a home run. I, th I just thought I could get more. But I was mm -hmm. also feeling, I felt like I was playing with fire. I didn't want to like pass up a deal to try to be greedy. You know what I mean? So right. I just, you know, I just kept it very honest with everybody. I just told the guy, I says, you know, look, um, if I can't move it in a week, I'm going to come straight to you, but I think I can get more for it. So, and I was just trying to see where he was at, you know, I reached out to another guy that I met and he said, uh, yeah, you know, I can't even beat the 112. So I said, all right, no problem. You know? So I actually called my wife. And I was telling her, I go, you know, should, should I just take this 112 and just go on to the next deal? I mean, we did this fast, you know, and, and she goes, well, I think you should just give it a little bit more time. So I said, all right. So I went back to some of your videos. I was watching more stuff. And I think in one of your videos, you talk about like listing properties on Craigslist. So mm -hmm. I just did it very simple. You know, I just, I took a, one picture of the property. I just put for the, um, for the headline, I put serious cash buyers only. And then I just put deep discounted property uh, worth 195000 asking 128 or best offer and my phone rang in 30 minutes literally 30 minutes wow. i get this guy calls me yeah and, and what's crazy is no one else has called me what, but, what, but him. What, what 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 price did you put on it i put it at 128 or best offer is what i put okay on. all right all right so the guy calls me and he tells me right off the bat he says you know i, I uh i you know i do about five or six flips a month i'm a rehabber blah 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 i have all these connections i'm interested in the property i want it but i need to see pictures 
yada yada. So what I ended up doing was um, I sent him the address. I sent him all the pictures I had, about 30 pictures. I also did a video, like you talk, like you say, you know, of the property. So mm-hmm. I sent him the video link. So he had plenty of stuff to see everything, you know. He called me right back, says, he goes, Chris, I want it. We'll do it. Everything's good to go. I'll open escrow tomorrow. I'll close this thing in five days. I'm thinking, this is too good to be true. Like, there's no way, you know. <laughs> and so I'm also thinking, you know, I don't have a contract with him or nothing, but, you know. So well, wait a minute. Point, so uh, this just, is all just yeah. So oh, so the the um, let me ask you. So the date that you placed it on the contract officially at the 102 five was. Do you remember? Uh, well, it. I was in Vegas over the weekend. He signed it like on a Sunday. So mm-hmm. I got back in, t- I got back in town Monday. I think I posted that Craigslist ad Thursday because on Wednesday I went to uh, that real estate meeting. I was talking oh, about. Yeah, correct. Correct. And, and I had that contract at one Oh seven. I, I hadn't even sent it to an escrow agent or nothing. I just had it. I didn't know what to do with it at first. <laughs> you know what I mean? Correct. Yeah. So I didn't even open escrow, but when I was talking to this guy, he says he would do it at one Oh eight or uh, excuse me, one twenty eight. And he just says, yeah, I'll do it. We'll open escrow tomorrow. I'll close in five days, whatever, whatever. And I'm thinking, okay, well, I don't, I don't even have escrow open on my end. And I'm thinking I need a contract with him. And he tells me, he says, you know, Chris, he goes, we'll use my escrow guy. He goes, I do tons of deals. It's going to be easy, blah, 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 blah. So I, on my way home, he sends me a text. He says, how about 116? Will you take it? I knew, I knew we weren't done yet. You know what I mean? It was too good to yeah, be true. Yeah, on the phone. yeah, 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 yeah. So when he texts me that, I just text back, no. That's all I put, no. And I just mm-hmm. waited. It was a long drive home too. I was just like driving, looking at my phone, you know, like, oh, you know, what's going to happen, you know? So then he says, all right, work with me. And I says, I can come down a little bit. I'll go 124. He texts me back, deal. I'll open escrow tomorrow. So this was like late at night. It was like at eight or nine o'clock at night. So in the morning, I'm thinking, okay, I don't know what I have to do. Do I have to take this to escrow or what, you know? So the morning he sends me a phone number. He says, this is my escrow guy. Send your contract to him and I'll do my stuff on my side. And so I t- I'm talking to him on the phone at this point. I'm like, well, I need like an EMD from you and, you know, a contract. And he's like, he's like, he was like laughing at me. He's like, man, I'm going to close this thing in three days. He's like, don't worry about it. He's like, you're going to get paid. My gut told me he wasn't lying to me. Right. So I was just like, yeah, this isn't typical well, protocol, but. Well, 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 but that's how a cash buyer talks. If you get a, a guy on the phone and well, I'm going to need 30 days. I need to do this or that. A well, cash buyer that's dead serious. That's now he may go, he's gonna try to haggle with you on the price because you know that's that's just the business, right? But they're going to talk speed because, as I always say, it is not hard to give away money. He yep. knew he was going to be able to make fifty or sixty grand off the property. Mm-hmm. He doesn't want you to show it to anybody else, so that's why uh-huh. he was putting up. Don't worry about it, you know, because you didn't know him or whatever. <laughs> right. But but that's the that's the way the tone of the conversation needs to go three, five, seven days. You know what I'm saying? You, you know, oh. you're dealing with someone that's going to make it happen, but go ahead. You're going to, you're going to love this. So when I'm talking to him in that same conversation, he said something to me and it just rung a bell in my head of hearing your voice on the videos. He says, yeah, he goes, I close this thing in three or four days. He goes, as soon as we can get a clear title. And you say that all the time too. So I thought, <laughs> oh man, this is, he's, this is the real deal, you know? So, uh, the next, you know, basically it, after that, it just went really smooth, but I called the uh, escrow guy and I told him, I said, Hey, I've actually renegotiated with the seller. The price is one Oh two five now. And he's like, don't worry. We'll just change it all on, on our end, you know? And on the contract that I had the seller sign, I never discussed with him what kind of deposit I was going to put, but I just put 10 bucks and I wanted to see if he would say anything, you know, and he didn't even care, yeah. you know, the seller. So the escrow <laughs> agent was actually laughing at me. He goes, 10, he's like, I've never seen a $10 one. He goes, man, he goes, that's big risk. And we were laughing about it, you know? I thought that was funny though that he said he's never seen one that low because here in California wow. I don't know if maybe they, people pay more or what you know. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, once we had escrow open, um, the only hiccup we ran into, and it wasn't even a hiccup, but the the cash buyer called me and he said, "Hey Chris, he goes, the people are still living in the house. Like we got to get them out before we close. So he goes, I want this done like now. He goes, let's go up there tomorrow, me and you, and just do like a cash for keys thing because they were kind of like squatters, you know. Mm, yeah. So. We go up there and uh, luckily for us, they were very cooperative. Um, I ended up spending like 1200 bucks to pay everybody and get them a, um, basically like a trailer to haul their stuff out of there. It was really cheap. Right. Everybody was really easy. Got them out. And then we closed the next day like that. Boom. Got my check. And the second I walked out of escrows, I text you. 
<laughs> what uh hey what did uh oh speaking of the check let's just show that right quick. i got a question but let, let me show that he said it didn't mind me showing the uh the moolah nah, i don't mind yeah so uh boom so there it is i blew up um the actual amount here this is what he actually texted me down here in the left you know we didn't want to put the whole check there because it has some information from you know whoever account this is on but um but yeah, so boom, there it is, guys. You know what I'm saying? Twenty one thousand five hundred big was my first deal was twenty five hundred dollars. <laughs> and this guy and this guy twenty one five. Wow. Some people don't make that in a year. Wow. Um that's that's what's happening though. Um yeah. so so yeah, so um how did they uh handle sounds like that title, uh that escrow company is what you all call it out there anyway. Um they sound like they've never done an assignment. How how did you um how did you instruct him on that on that part of it? Actually, it was um, the complete opposite. This this cash buyer that I'm dealing with, apparently he does you know five six deals a month, tons of assignments all the time. So his escrow agent knew exactly what to do. I mean, he okay. they're walking me through it. And when, when he called me down there and he says, uh, "Come down, I need you to sign." So I said, "Okay." So I came down there. It was just one paper that I signed, one signature. This whole thing, that's all I did was one signature. And okay. I was like that's it. And he's like, yeah, that's it. He's like, I already had the, the buyer sign. And then we're just waiting to fund. Um, but yeah, I guess apparently they do assignments all the time. And, you know, initially I was kind of nervous because, um, you know, I hear a lot of talk about the double escrow and the assignment. And this is all new to me, but I'm thinking, well, I got a big spread on here. Maybe like, maybe I'm supposed to do a double escrow. So the other guy doesn't see, but I don't know. I just felt like the guy was being, you know, the cash buyer, he was just, he wanted to get it done, you know, and he told me what to do oh, assignment, yeah. It'd be easy. And he wasn't even caring about it. But then he's now he's, he's still texting me now telling me, Chris, get me more deals quicker. The better. You know, I can't even get enough deals for this guy, you know? So I just, yeah, everything yeah. was a blessing. That, that's what I try to tell people is that, well, I don't want the buyer to see what I'm getting, or I don't want the seller to see what I'm getting. The seller's getting what you all agreed upon. You build great rapport with him. He's getting what you agreed upon. He knows you's not, you're not doing this for free. The buyer, <laughs> is okay with what you making money. He know you're not doing it free. He's begging you for more deals. You know, right. it, that, it's, it's just rare you're going to have people that act like that, especially <laughs> if it's the buyer. I don't even want to deal with a buyer if he's concerned about how much I'm making. So right. I just try to stress, double close, it works, but I don't see the re the, the reason for it. It's not necessary. It's just not necessary. And uh, as you say, this guy, obviously you, but the biggest thing is um, I've never done a, uh, interview. I've had students to do uh, stuff in California, but none more than to come on screen. So uh, I really appreciate you uh, taking the time out to do that. Uh, so what? No so what's next? So for so what's next for you uh, to move on? I know you got your regular your regular gig. So what what's next for you with Ford Real Estate? Well, you know the one thing with this first deal was I, I got so excited and distracted I dropped the ball on the on the marketing in the middle of it. But I just had two thousand yellow letters leave yesterday. So I got a couple thousand more going. What, what we're going to try to do, um, you know, me and my wife and my partner, we're going to try to like put a, a system in place to where we're doing, you know, maybe two or 3,000 postcards, a little bit of yellow letters. I got a few of the um, employees that work for me at my normal business. I'm going to have them start putting up my bandit signs for me, put them up and take them okay. down. Because where yeah. I'm at, they get taken down really quickly. Yeah, but yeah. I, our, our plan is to put a marketing campaign in place that'll produce enough leads to do three or four deals a month. And okay. Just kinda, that's our goal. How did you choose the market? Are you just focused on close to where you live? Um, yeah, I mean, I know the, the, the area I live in is called the Inland Empire. I know the Inland Empire market pretty well just because I live here and I got a couple of rentals and I'm just always researching. I'm just that kind of guy. But um, that, it's kind of funny because the, the deal I got was in the high desert. That's where my wife's from. And up there, that's like the only place around here where houses are like, under 200,000. Like where I live here in Riverside, the medium house range is like, you know, 400,000. Um, and I'm still doing marketing here too, but I just had a good feeling about the high desert because properties are so cheap up there. And so right now on my letters, I got about half of them going up there and the other half are like down here, uh, more in the Inland Empire. Um, we're just kind of, I mean, honestly, Ty, we're just kind of winging it, you know, we're just <laughs> going out the you, marketing and relying on the salesmanship to get the deals, you know? So Correct, correct. Um, I could tell you with the bandit signs, um, if you don't see them in whatever area you're placing them in, normally you're not going to be able to get enough life out of them. So you may have to get outside of your comfort zone a little bit and uh, go into, if you're going to use those in heavy numbers uh, and see where they are getting life. 
You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. It, I know you want to be in areas where there's no competition, but bandit signs are nothing new. Uh, most of the guys that have used them in your market, um, they've used them for a long time. They know what it, where they can get away with them. So, um, so that, that's, you know, but uh, obviously, you know, you, you're a telemarketer, so you know how to get the phone ringing or, or yeah, whatever. Yeah. So uh, that's, that's powerful, man. So, Man, yeah, I, I really appreciate you uh, spending this time with us, man. It, 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 just in, a, I guess, a last word, what, what would you like to share with those that are uh, thinking about or they're sputtering around or whatever about getting into the business? Well, um, for any, if there's anybody out there listening to this that's thinking they want to do it or hesitant, my advice would be just to just get out there and do it because uh, when, we, when we first had this idea, my initial thought was, okay, I need to get all this stuff ready to go, you know, and we, we actually did get a website. We bought business cards, all kinds of things that aren't, you know, that we need, but we don't need yet, you know? No, you don't, they don't, they don't prevent you from doing a deal. Those are add-ons. Right. But I know a lot of people are out there, they get a, uh, you know, analysis paralysis. I would say just jump in and just go for it. But once you start talking to people, I mean, it's really easy. The, the people that call are more nervous than you are. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and I just want to say for the record, Ty, uh, very, very much appreciate you and what you're doing with all the free information you put out there. Uh, no problem at all, man. Um, uh, payment uh, with you doing this interview is enough, enough for me. Again, you. Um, you know, it, it's going to help others, you know what I'm saying, yeah. to understand that it's real. You know, it's real yeah. in California. You know it's real in California. I got 21,000 <laughs> reasons to show you. <laughs> 21 big ones, 21 five big ones. Yeah. But I uh, really appreciate it, man. And, um, I guess with everyone, uh, obviously, you know, I have the free videos again. Um, I'm going to go back through that stuff again right quick. But um, um, you see the, the real pre for funds, um, uh, the private money list, uh, flipthisbuilding.com, the coaching. You see my handles on Instagram. You want a copy of the free contract. There you go. Um, but um, what else we got here? And uh, the 200 free videos, subscribe to my channel. So, again, uh, we really appreciate Chris uh, sharing uh, his story with us. Uh, I hope it helps uh, people that are trying to um, to get in the biz. Uh, this stuff is real, man. Uh, I'm not a, I'm no smarter than any of you all. Um, Chris is probably smarter than me, but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you just have to take action. Don't feel like you have to know everything. This guy, man, he was. He fumbled through it, basically. You know what I'm saying? Watching really. videos, didn't even know how to fill out the contract and just start watching my videos on the buyer side and the seller side. And he used that one-page contract that I have um, to do the deal. I guess the escrow company was okay with it, right? Yeah, totally okay, okay. with it. <laughs> what, what did, did, you all even, did you even do a contract with the buyer? No. <laughs> I've done those too. <laughs> so he can't you to come down and sign the, the I guess an assignment of contract. That's yeah. all the escrow need to have on file to make it a legitimate legitimate for them. So boom, you know, assignments are legal, people. I don't care where you are. You have yep. some small little technicalities on real estate laws in different states, but assignment of contract is legal. All contracts are assignable unless the contract states that it's not. It's that simple. That was my again, favorite part. Right on the yeah. check, it said assignment fee. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. But I appreciate it, man. And um, I'll, I'll be here yes, from you, man. And um, I right, keep 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 getting it. Yeah, we'll do. All right, and see you all on the flip side. Thanks. Thank you.